Okay, testing. Excellent. We're finally on live. Uh, we're going to open the um, echo listening session now. This is the uh, fifth uh, meeting that we've had. And um, basically, we're here to hear what everyone has to say. Uh, so you probably are not going to hear too many comments from us. Um, at any rate, to start the meeting, we'll have Jill do a roll call. Jay Pendergast. Here. Pat Northy. Here. Jeffrey Alt. Here. Sarah Lee Morrissey. Here. Pat Patterson. Here. David Romeo. Here. Reggie Santilli. Here. Stacy Simmons. Here. Jack Surrett. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, excellent. Uh, we'll be uh, presenting a, the echo uh, video of the program explaining uh, what it does and some of the recommended uh, improvements to it. Um, let's go. Welcome to today's ECHO presentation. Today we're going to give you a brief history of ECHO, show you the ECHO video, go over the ECHO processes for the various grant programs, talk about the recommendations from both the auditor and the advisory committee, and then hear from you with public comments and questions. What is ECHO? Volusia ECHO provides grant funds to finance acquisition, restoration, construction, or improvement of facilities to be used for environmental, cultural, historical, and outdoor recreational purposes. The Volusia ECHO program generated by a grassroots initiative resulted from a citizen approved referendum passed November 7th of 2000. On November 3rd, 2020, Volusia County voters reauthorized the program for another 20 years. Um, and again, and once we got that uh, ECHO funding and we were able to uh, have a, a building, uh, it, it really did provide this location and home for us. And so it was uh, instrumental to have the, the ECHO funding uh, to be able to continue with our programs uh, and also which preservation is part of our mission as well. We give credit to the ECHO for being able to provide the assistance to the finance to be able to have such a facility in this community. These are legacy projects that we, me, everybody who's involved in them have left for the next generation. We have projects across the county that, that those that next generation are going to value and, and love and take care of because we've laid the groundwork as, as a community. And that's really the really neat thing about ECHO is that it's a, it is a community-driven initiative. In 1998, Volusia County residents and community leaders brought to the County Council a funding idea to enhance environmental, cultural, historic, and outdoor opportunities. Community members identified goals, purposes, and objectives during multiple meetings. We formed a committee. We went out and did listening sessions around the county and listened to what the people said. If, you put, if we vote for this, here's what we want you to do. Here's what we want you to spend the money on. This groundswell of support motivated the County Council to approve a resolution to add Volusia Echo to the 2000 ballot. With this passage, voters agreed to contribute 20 cents on each $1,000 of taxable value toward the fund. Today, the average homeowner pays less than $25 a year for the Echo Fund. The funding is used for the acquisition, restoration, construction, and improvement of environmental, cultural, historic, and outdoor recreation projects throughout the county. Eligible applicants are Volusia County cities, nonprofits, and county departments that meet established criteria. The ECHO Advisory Committee recommends grant awards to the County Council for final approval. The County Council also can direct expenditures for county projects deemed of broad community significance. Since 2001, 229 awards exceeding $88 million have been made. Grantees provided significant matches and assets and cash exceeding $147 million. This brings the total investment to $235 million.
Volusia County has a diverse and delicate ecosystem ranging from low beach and marsh areas to high and dry pine forests. Educating the public about our environment is a key factor in maintaining a healthy, sustainable community. Since 2001, ECHO Awards have supported environmental learning centers and education habitats. These facilities teach the public about the importance of maintaining ecosystems while meeting the demands of our growing population. Projects have included the Central Park Environmental Learning Center in Ormond Beach, the Lionia Environmental Center in Deltona, and the Marine Discovery Center in New Smyrna Beach. Now starting. All, All of us are thinking when we're pie in the sky, we're thinking of money because that's always the first barrier. And so ECHO really helps take that away. Now, as you know, ECHO doesn't provide operational support. What it provides is, is support for you know, the capital brick and mortar projects. And so uh, for us, when we're going through these planning phases, we'll look at, okay, what are our sources of funding available? And that helps us determine you know, what's feasible and how do we phase it when. Um, it, you know, we've gone from seeing you know, a few thousand a year to seeing well over 30,000 a year. And, and ECHO has been a big part of that because of having a facility. Cultural activities improve quality of life and bring the community together to experience the arts. In turn, the arts increase the county's tourism-based economy and encourage redevelopment in our own downtown and urban areas. Museums, theaters, art centers, and community gathering places have received ECHO grants. Some of the more notable projects include the Little Theater of New Smyrna Beach, the Museum of Arts and Science in Daytona Beach, and the African American Museum in Deland. When the amphitheater came up and was open, it was in 2004. That was phase one. Well, there was a phase two. And the phase two is to construct a new museum because that is our big dream. Because if you can do it once, surely you can do it again. So that is how I feel about the Echo. Volusia County is home to over 200 sites on the National Register of Historic Places. They include downtown neighborhoods, individual buildings, archaeological sites, and agricultural educational districts. ECHO funds have enabled the acquisition, stabilization, or restoration of many of our historic properties. Examples are Lillian Place in Daytona Beach, Athens Theater in the Land, and the Pioneer Art Settlement in Barberville. There's very few people that went to school in Volusia County in elementary school that don't remember coming here on a field trip and dipping candles or um, feeding the animals. So we hear it a lot. People are coming back now uh, with their children and saying, oh, I remember coming here as a kid and I love it here. So um, I think our impact on the county is uh, probably more than we actually even realize. In 2010, the Florida Trust for Historic Preservation awarded Volusia County the Outstanding Organization Achievement Award for its commitment to historic preservation through the ECHO program. Without the ECHO funds, the settlement, I can't even imagine what it would be because the two buildings that the ECHO funds have helped us with are so important to our existence. Outdoor recreation is an important facet in the lives of our residents and visitors. Volusia County's abundance of natural resources are an important asset to our extensive and vibrant park system. Echo funds have been used for trails, parks, sports complexes, dog parks, pools, playgrounds, beach and water access, and many other projects. From Andy Romano Beachfront Park in Ormond Beach to Rob Sullivan Park in DeBerry, every area in Volusia County has benefited from ECHO funds. In 2004, the Volusia County Council initiated an annual $1 million commitment to our trails from the ECHO program funds. These dollars are used with state and federal funds for the development of Volusia County's showcase trail system. 
we are ground zero. We've got on the east side, we have uh, Edgewater near Smyrna Beach, which will benefit tourism wise. And then here in DeBerry, we'll have that too because the, the trail will split. It'll go off to Seminole Lake County from here and it'll go north to Putnam County from here. So we are well positioned to take advantage of that that uh, $20 million investment long-term. Today, the county's major trail systems are the St. John's River to Sea Loop and the Coast to Coast Trail. When finished, they will stretch across 108 miles throughout Volusia County. Since 2001, more than $88 million have been awarded to 229 ECHO grant recipients. But the impact goes beyond mere numbers. Nearly a generation ago, civic leaders recognized the need to preserve and enhance our quality of life, not only for the current residents, but for the future generations. Through continuous efforts, the ECHO program has created a distinguished legacy in this county and an unparalleled gift for the community. It's a fabulous program. It is driven by the community. Uh, it's their investment, and they should be very proud of the fact that, that in 2000, they overwhelmingly supported to tax themselves for this. That's a big deal. There are four ECHO project types. Environmental, ECHO funds support development of environmental learning centers which educate about how lifestyle decisions affect our environment and future sustainability. Volusia County is a diverse and delicate ecosystem ranging from low beach and marsh areas to high and dry pine forests. Cultural. ECHO funds the construction of cultural facilities that play an important role in improving the quality of life for our citizens. The arts increase the county's tourism-based economy and encourage redevelopment in our downtown and urban areas. Historic. Volusia County is home to over 200 sites listed on the National Register of Historic Places. ECHO policies were approved to encourage restoration and acquisition of these endangered facilities. Outdoor recreation. Outdoor recreation, and especially in our parks, plays an important role in improving quality of life. Additionally, our trail system meanders as a linear park throughout Volusia County. The standard ECHO project process. Standard projects have a maximum grant award of $400,000 and require a one-to-one -one match. Mandatory workshops, a representative from the applicant must attend a workshop. Next is the technical completeness application. All applicants are required to submit a complete technical completeness application. Staff will review this application and provide each applicant with a technical review prior to the final application deadline. The final application. All applicants are required to submit a final application. A clean hand search will be completed on each applicant. The clean hands requirement stipulates that the applicant, its officers and or significant stakeholders must be in compliance with all Volusia County codes and have no outstanding past due debt with the County of Volusia in order to be eligible to receive an ECHO grant. Site visits and eligibility meeting. The ECHO Advisory Committee shall visit each applicant's project site. It is mandatory that the applicant's representative is in attendance to answer questions. Grant Review Panel Meeting The ECHO Advisory Committee sits as the Grant Review Panel to review and score all eligible applications. An application must score an average of an 80 or above to be recommended to County Council pending funding availability. It is mandatory that the applicant's representative is in attendance. The ECHO Advisory Committee makes recommendation for approval or denial to the County Council. The County Council makes a final determination on grant award. Eligibility requirements. The applicant must be a Volusia County government, municipal government in Volusia County, or a not-for-profit 501c3 that meets certain criteria. First, must be incorporated within the state of Volusia and classified as a 501c3 maintained incorporated status for more than two years prior to the application deadline, or incorporated with the state of Florida for less than two years at the time of the application deadline, but has provided operations in Volusia County for a minimum of 10 years and provided the most recent five years of independent certified audits and management letters, 
or is a registered foreign corporation doing business in the state of Florida with a local group within Volusia County that can provide evidence of public service to Volusia County citizens for the five year period prior to the ECHO application deadline. They must also demonstrate five years of 501c3 status in its state of incorporation. The applicant must not owe the county any money or have any outstanding code violations. They must have satisfied all administrative requirements of previous grants agreements received from or administered by the County of Volusia. And they must also agree to the match as outlined in the documents. ECHO funds are to be used solely to finance acquisition, restoration, construction, and improvement of environmental, ecological, cultural, historical heritage, and outdoor recreation facilities for public use. Only one application for the same project, facility, complex, or site will be accepted in a single grant cycle. There may be no more than two open ECHO grant awards per project site. Projects should not duplicate each other or an existing or planned ECHO related function in the same area of service. Projects solely for depreciable items with less life expectancy than the required grant agreement period are ineligible. Clean hands. The ECHO staff will conduct a clean hand search prior to determining eligibility. We recommend that applicants request a clean hand search prior to submitting an ECHO grant application. Public access and ownership. The project must be accessible to the public for a period of 40 years from execution of the grant agreement. Public access to the project must be three years for a standard grant and four years for an exceptional grant. Documentation of ownership or lease must be for at least 40 years. The following are not eligible. Only access to the exterior of a building, intended for students, faculty, or staff, intended to augment or support curriculum, multi-use campuses, complexes with no designated parking. The exceptional grant process. A project of paramount and crucial countywide importance provides services to all areas of the county. A maximum of $1.8 million or $600,000 each year for three years with a match requirement of four to one. All other parts of the grant process remain the same as the standard grant, including the ECHO workshop, technical completeness application, final application, site visits, eligibility meeting, grant review panel meeting, and final award by the County Council. Exceptional grant examples include Earl Brown Park in Deland and the Museum of Arts and Sciences in Daytona Beach. Critical historic acquisition and or stabilization grant. This program was approved in July 2009 to address the immediate need to acquire and or stabilize historic buildings outside of the standard grant cycle. The process for this grant is similar to the process used for a standard grant application. The difference is the applicant's responsibility to provide credible evidence of the importance of the historic project, the need for immediate intervention, and the ability to fully support the operations. The maximum award is $600,000 and requires a one-to-one -one match. Direct county expenditure process. Resolution 2156 allows for the County Council to fund projects by direct county expenditure for county government projects or by grant and aid awards. Resolution 2013-202 states the County Council will present direct county expenditures of ECHO funds to the ECHO Advisory Committee for review. Internal Audit. On May 11, 2020, the County's Internal Auditor presented the ECHO Internal Audit Report and made recommendations to the County Council. On June 25th and July 30th, 2020, the ECHO Advisory Committee reviewed those recommendations, accepted them, and made recommendations of their own. This presentation lays out both sets of recommendations. Increase the standard grant award from $400,000 to $600,000 annually. The source of that recommendation is from the audit and from the committee. Reduce the percentage of cash match required for nonprofit organizations depending on the nonprofit size. The source again was from the audit in the committee. For the cash match, the percentage is reduced from 50% and is dependent on the nonprofit size. The guidelines to determine the size of the nonprofit match, the guidelines of the audit requirements for nonprofits are as follows. The average of the last three fiscal years operating revenues or expenses is used to determine the percentage of cash match that must be provided. 
if the annual average of the three fiscal years completed prior to the application deadline is $500,000 or greater, the applicant must provide 40% of overall match in unencumbered cash or expenditures. If the annual average of the three fiscal years completed prior to the application deadline is less than $500,000 and greater than $250,000, the applicant must provide 30% of overall match in unencumbered cash or expenditures. And if the annual average of the three fiscal years completed prior to the application deadline is less than $250,000, then the applicant must provide 20% of overall match in unencumbered cash or expenditures. Include language that requires staff internal final completeness review to include if a project has public accessibility regardless of anticipated future phases. The source was the audit. Increase exceptional awards from $1.8 million to $2. million. The $1.8 million is with a distribution of up to $600,000 for up to three consecutive years. The change would recommend that $2 million with a distribution over three year period, but doesn't limit the amount per year. This still requires that the exceptional project has a regional impact. Additionally, we would change the match requirements for exceptional awards from four to one to one to one. Currently, an applicant that would receive $1.8 million would have to provide four times that amount or $7.2 million in match. In the proposed change, they would only have to provide $1 for every dollar requested for a $1.8 million application. That would be $1.8 million in match. An applicant may only have three open projects at one time. The source of this recommendation is the committee. The next recommendation is for a standard 20 year time frame for documentation of undistributed use of property and or buildings. The current time frame depends on the type of project. A restoration renovation project requires 30 years. Expansion addition projects, 30 years and new facilities require 40 years of undistributed use of property and or building sources. The current time frame depends on the type of project. Restoration renovation projects are for 30 years. Expansion and addition projects also 30 years and new facilities are 40 years. This recommendation would require 20 year time frame from documentation of undistributed use of property and or buildings. The source is the committee. The public access changed from four years from award to three years from award for a standard grant. Public access changed from four years from the dates of last award to four years from initial award for an exceptional grant. Construction documentation requirements were elaborated to ensure projects are ready to move forward if awarded a grant. Source, the committee. Require the business plan, feasibility study, and marketing plans to be specific to Volusia County. Source, committee. Remove the requirement for exceptional projects to be in the top two of the regular standard grant cycles. Source committee. Include language that requires the clean hand search is maintained in the project file. Source the audit. Require ECHO grant agreements to be executed by the applicant prior to County Council approval. If approved, the County Council will execute the agreement on the date of approval. Source the audit and committee. Require that proof of a performance bond naming Volusia County as a co obligee be submitted before a notice to proceed is issued. Require the Volusia County logo and ECHO logo to appear on the project and applicant website in an all media, print or electronic for the project within 90 days of award. Source, the committee. Include language that any extension requiring more than an additional 365 days beyond the time period will be reviewed only twice a year. Include language that a summary of the quarterly reports will be provided to the ECHO Advisory Committee. If quarterly reports are not submitted or not submitted timely for two consecutive quarters, the grantee will be required to attend an ECHO Advisory Committee meeting and provide a status update. Quarterly reports are due on the 15th day after the end of the quarter. Include language that site visit and completion of a monitoring worksheet will occur at least twice a year during the construction phase. Source, audit and committee. Include language that projects will be visited and a completion of a monitoring worksheet will be completed on a triannual basis. If there are concerns, a site visit will be completed on an annual basis or more frequently if warranted. 
until the project receives three consecutive clean monitoring reports. Source, audit and committee. Okay, now that we've seen the uh, presentation, uh, we're going to open it to the floor. And um, we just ask you to uh, come up to the microphone and state your name. And um, we're here to listen. Maggie Ardito. Hello. I'm Maggie Ardito, uh, president and co-founder of the St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance. ECHO stands, as we all do, for environment, culture, history, and outdoor recreation values we all hold dear. I want to talk about one to topic that hits all of these values, and that is the topic of trails and bike walk friendly infrastructure and public places. These not only get people outdoors for recreation, at the same time they instill deep connection to history, environment, and culture. Volusia is home to more miles of state-funded trails than any other county. The St. John's River to Sea Loop is a 260-mile, mostly state-funded, top-priority trail, and nearly half of that is in Volusia County. The other top priority trail, the coast to coast, is also in Volusia, and neither of these would exist without ECHO. These trails won their state funding because of our existing trail system, the Spring to Spring Trail and the East Central Regional Rail Trail. Although incomplete, they swayed the decision for state funding because they showed Volusia's commitment to trails. Every trail in Volusia County owes its existence to ECHO. These trails improve our quality of life along every dimension, health and wellness, environment, safety, equity, economy, and, and strong community. When complete, they will matter even more. Large critical gaps remain in both East and West Volusia. In West Volusia, we depend specifically on ECHO for the critical gap in the Spring to Spring Trail north of Lake Beresford Park. DOT was unable to determine a viable route, so it falls to the county to complete this 3.5 mile section, and we can't do it without ECHO. Once the Beresford Gap is done, we'll have a 61 mile trail from De Leon Springs to Edgewater that will attract tra trail lovers from near and far. In the east, there are gaps north of both Edgewater and Ormond that will require county funding. These trails will continue to improve the quality of life for residents and bring in the best kind of tourists, affluent, educated, and environmentally conscious. Georgia Turner has this to say, being the epicenter of two major trail systems is a tourism dream. Trail information is already the most requested form of information in the visitor center, and it will be even more important when the trails are completed. We also need regional connector trails. There is no safe route from downtown the land to the loop or to the future sun rail station. It's up to the county to create that safe route. We hope to revitalize the Spring Hill area through the CRA funding, but revitalization can only have lasting impact when people are out and about walking, cycling, and socializing on the streets. And this again comes down to active equitable mobility through trails. So it's vitally important to set aside sufficient funding for trails. Thank you. Wendy Anderson. Good evening. And I just wanted to say hello and thank you for your service on the ECHO Advisory Board. 
I am a professor at Stetson University. I'm also the chair of the Soil and Water Conservation District of Volusia County, and I'm also on the board of the St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance. And I wanted to just follow up on Maggie Ardito's comments, knowing that um, her three minutes would go all too fast, and, and pick up on the point that in addition to being obviously a very important part of what attracts tourists to Volusia County, our trails are also part of the quality of life that we enjoy as residents. But what we really do need are better connections from our communities out to the regional trails and better connections from the regional trails into our communities. So tourists may come and enjoy that trail, but how do they get to Deland? How do they get into Deland Springs? How do they get into Ormond, um, the city of Ormond Beach? Um, we need better connector trails. And these are important not just for tourists, but the connector trails also become part of um, the opportunity for our residents to be commuters, to be able to actually ride their bikes in safe, um, separated trails um, off of the streets where, where traffic might be um, a little bit more dangerous for them. So we're hoping that ECHO funds might be able to be applied to creating some of those connector trails that serve both residents and tourists. Um, we also wanted to just note that as Volusia County continues its unbridled development in urban sprawl, <laughs> that, um, that we will be hoping and trying to work with developers to get them to include trail systems within those developments, but also to connect those new developments to our regional and community scale trails so that new residents moving into those developments will be able to connect. Of course, ECHO should not be used for trails within new developments. Developers should pay for that. But ECHO might be very useful in helping continue that expansion of our trail system throughout our communities and certainly throughout our county. Thank you. Oh, the other thing, and I have 49 seconds, is that um, Maggie forgot to say it, and I almost forgot to say it. We really urge you, we urge you to continue the trail set aside of $1 million and to consider possibly even expanding that. Thank you. Patty Pardee. Thank you, I'm Patty Pardee. I'm the executive director of the Museum of Art Deland. And our organization is entering its 70th year of service to uh, the people of Volusia County. Um, we have a long history, but we also have some exciting plans for the future that include embarking on a capital campaign for our location at 600 North Woodland Boulevard. And as you know, many of the organizations that have benefited from ECHO funds over the past 20 years are now ready for improvements. And so we just, we appreciate your support and your service and ask for your uh, continued support to the long-serving organizations of Volusia County, like the Museum of Art to Land. We have some great things planned. Thank you. Ray Johnson. Good evening. Ray Johnson, 714. Pine Tree Court, the land. The presentation that I heard was very enlightening. And um, as an individual, I don't meet the eligibility requirements, but I would like to propose that you consider two projects. And I would love to have three minutes for each of those projects. Um, the first project, and great, we've got the, got the images coming up. The first project is to create a sculpture garden in the land at Painter, uh, Painter's Pond and Sunflower Park in the land. And I would like to see you allocate at least $600,000 towards that project working with the city. Now, if you take a very utilitarian site being used for stormwater retention, here's an opportunity to create a gem in the middle of the city working with the city to vacate a part of the roadway between the two retention ponds again so it becomes a pedestrian area make it a people space make it a gym if you look at places like and can you rotate more 
images, uh, Brook Green Gardens in South Carolina, the great example, although it's a 9,000 acres we're here, we're talking a lot less. Um, and you have other gardens like Lou Gardens in Orlando, and we can seek sponsors for the sculpture projects. The project will have a great impact, not only on the citizens of the land, but also all of Volusia County, because almost all of Volusia County residents come here at one time or another. So to me, it's a great opportunity to create a sculpture garden along with a miniature botanical garden. So it becomes a destination for people in the city, for people in the county. One more slide. This is the one where we have an opportunity to place sculpture within the retention pond area. With that, let me move to project number two, the town square. It's time, in my opinion, to reclaim the parking area on the west side of the historic county courthouse for a public plaza and also a sculpture garden, but a classical fountain uh, with sculpture, not too unlike what you see in the great fountains of Portugal or European cities. I propose that you allocate at least $1 million towards this project initially, but it does involve solving the issue of parking within the city. There are currently 128 spaces on the west side of the um, courthouse. And with a long-term vision of creating a parking garage, perhaps on West Rich, um, the project would be a win-win for the county and the city, as well as the businesses in town and the citizens of the land. It certainly would be a place for tourism. If we look at the town square in the European cities, it's a market square created as a center. And obviously the historic courthouse is the center. It's a place for development of community, culture, and democracy. When you look at the history of what has happened in those town squares of Europe, it's a place for dialogue discussion, meetings, greetings, shared experiences, forming bonds. No subject in a town square is taboo. Um, mainly they exchange stories about their lives or experiences, details about family, work, state of health, their plans, their hopes, for their dreams. The community exists only when people know each other's stories. And this is a great place to tell those stories. The town square fosters sociability, interaction. Sociability involves gossiping, bantering, storytelling, flirtation, joking, intermixed with seriousness and concerns for others. The town square is also a marketplace and we have a great marketplace in Arson Alley, but here's a place to expand that. Even today, the market is the most powerful mechanism for generating social life and economic activity. More powerful than any other activity on the square. More potent than the design characteristics of the surrounding buildings. City officials and county officials could let it be known that if citizens wish to talk unofficially about various subjects outside of office hours, they could meet on the square. A great opportunity to meet your local officials. Great diversity of users come to the square. The very viewpoints and opinions come together on the square. In summary, and I'll wrap it up here, the square is the essence of the European city. And we need a square in the land. 
and we have a great opportunity to do that on the west side of the historic county courthouse. It epitomizes the community's heritage and symbolizes its identity. Thank you. Bob, I'm very sorry I can't pronounce your last name. You're with the Avatar Company? No? Oh, okay. Brian Robinson. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Robinson. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the advisory board for recognizing me for this time on the floor. Uh, second, I would like to state that I am a graduate and ambassador of the Save Our Springs and Rivers Academy under the Riverside Conservancy umbrella. Uh, finally, I'd like to state that as everyone in the room, uh, I am a con conservationist by birth. Uh, I was raised in, Flor in Hastings, Florida, uh, right across from two uh, large potato and cabbage fields. Um, the companies that own those fields, they pump unknown amounts of chemicals into them and to the point that the running joke was is that the residents of Hastings would be drinking sulfur water for the next hundred years. This is an industrialist mindset that has to change. So with that said, I'd like to make three requests of the council. Uh, one, allow the use of echo funds for planting shorelines and aquatic buffers with appropriate veg vegetation and living components. Two, allow the full purchase price for appraised or appraised value at the land and of land to be used as cash match for living shoreline restoration and three allow 15 percent of each grant to be utilized for project management during the first year of operation thank you for your time and attention Kelly McGee. Thank you so much. I'm Kelly McGee, Executive Director of the Riverside Conservancy. Uh, when I spoke to you in Deltona, I saw out of the corner of my eye I had three seconds left. Turns out I had 30 seconds left. So um, thank you for letting me speak again. This evening, um, I have submitted a letter for your consideration on behalf of the Riverside Conservancy with a few um, recommendations for you all. Um, I have some slides that sort of walk through that. I'm not going to go through all of the slides, but um, I just would like to point out to you all that only 5% of the ECHO funding that's been awarded has gone to environmental programs. And I think that part of the reason may be because of um, the the idea that it's uh, that facilities are required as opposed to programs. Thank you so much. Um, and actually, if we if we look at the ballot language, it says programs and and not facilities. So just something for your consideration. Um, again, here's the ballot language, and I'll just try to roll through some of these. Um, clean water is a unifying issue, and um, so our first three comments, as Brian mentioned, is allowing. Um, funding for living shorelines, um, allowing the, oh, also just as an FYI, I promised you definitions of green infrastructure. So these slides have definitions, has the EPA definition. Um, we have the Florida DEP definition. Um, and uh, what my recommendation would be for a definition as well as um, a slide about no, that NOAA's um, information about living shorelines. And um, so you've got all of my recommendations in here. So we can just go to the very end, perhaps, um, with the pho photographs. There we go. So um, thank you. I agree with everything that the speakers have said here today. Some great ideas, some great synergies could happen. Um, I've included some examples of what living shorelines could look like um, and the requirements of having proper 
um, design and habitat conservation plans. This is an example of one that we've completed in Edgewater. Um, this is a cross section of the design with the living components as well as the oyster restoration modules. This is an aerial view. Um, the area we planted was an average of 30 feet. The, the needs for planting will depend on the location and um, the oyster modules um, that we have. I'll show you a picture in a minute. But here's um, you know, right after it was planted, um, we have these oyster modules that University of Florida Whitney Lab has made that we have also installed throughout the project. And it's important to note that um, that there be studies and follow-ups. So we actually can, uh, we, we measured the amount of oyster um, spat that actually attached to these core modules. And you can see them um, actually in these photographs, the tiny little baby oysters that attach to the modules that we um, planted. And we do use the quadrat analysis um, to make sure that we're actually counting the growth and monitoring um, the plant growth over time. Um, and so that's something that I would recommend um, that you have, uh, if you're allowing living shorelines, that you require a habitat conservation plan, conservation easement. Um, I, I urge you to uh, recommend to the county council that they open the grant cycle this year with um, perhaps our top three recommendations and the recommendations of this committee and um, continue working uh, to make improvements over time and even perhaps have a joint um, workshop with Volusia Forever to see if there are synergies that could happen. Thank you so much. Christian Gowan. Hello everybody, Christian Gowan. I live here in DeLand. Um, born and raised in Volusia County. And I guess I've kind of grown up with ECHO, uh, not to make anyone feel bad. I'm 28, so it's been around most of my life. Um, I think the projects that have come through in the past 20 years have been great. I love going to the Athens. Um, I'm a Stetson grad, go Hatters, love the new Aquatic Center. Um, and of course the parks, and uh, I park off the beach as well. Um, pardon the pun, but I'm going to echo the comments of a lot of the people um, that have already come up to talk. I think this is a great opportunity to fund um, trails and would encourage funding safe crossings and connections. Um, I also frequently go to Gemini Springs, one of our awesome county parks, and I think there'd be a great opportunity for funding several projects there. Um, and reviewing the, the past projects, a lot of the outdoor recreation, which isn't bad, but I would love to see um, some focus on the environmental and cultural and historic as well. And that's all I had. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? That's all. Okay. Do well, we have we, anyone online that wants to speak? Can we online? ask them to raise their hand if they're interested? Is there anyone online that would like to speak? If you'll just raise your hand and unmute your mic. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. This is Fred Peace. Yes, this is Fred Peace, 1571 Allenson Drive, Deland, Florida. Friends of all that have spoken tonight, I know you, worked with you in your projects. I love all the um, process that, um, and appreciate all that are on your committees, and that this uh, these two programs, Echo and Forever, have provided for the county. I want to address generically issues of process, and there are two different ones. Uh, the two first issue I'll call the haves versus the have-nots, and the second issue I'll call avoiding potential liability. Issue one, haves versus have-nots. The overall ECHO grant application process, the requirements for procurement and approval, subsequent funding, 
which needs matching dollars is very burdensome and discouraging for small group organizations, nonprofit organizations, and private interest groups, such as historic societies, visual arts museums, performing arts groups, theater, and environmental groups are positioned at a major disadvantage compared to the abilities of government agencies, either county or city, to obtain grant monies and administer their projects as outlined in existing criteria. Please look into creating a different set of criteria for the little guys, the have-nots, access to public dollars intended for ECHO projects to be fair and reasonably attainable for all these nonprofit groups and organizations. Issue two, avoiding potential liabilities. A portion of ECHO funding is needed for maintenance and upkeep of built projects. This maintenance and repair need is particularly evident in the many miles of bike trails and pedestrian paths. Repair of potholes, eroding path edges are evident in abundance. Not maintaining and addressing these issues opens up a potentially dangerous situation. The proverbial elephant in the room is civil loss. The real problem is not the elephant, it's the mind. The users of looks like those floating out in our ocean. And the uh, mice easily turned into rats and spoiled the thing for all. Please remember. Mr. Peace, we can't hear you. You've been breaking up. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, then I, I let go of my tongue. Is there no one else that wishes to speak, Joe? Okay. Okay, well with that, we will close the um, uh, public comment portion of the listening session. Um, I, I have a comment uh, that I'd like to make. Uh, one of the board members um, has requested that at our next meeting, uh, an awful lot has come up about the trails. And even tonight, there were even more questions uh, coming up. And I would, I would like for the ECHO board to be sort of better versed in what's going on and and request that maybe Tim Bailey come to our next meeting and give us a presentation because we've heard lots of things there's missing pieces there's future pieces um, and I believe that we probably uh, probably all agree if, of the importance uh, we all you know probably we do agree of the importance of this trail system and I think that we'd like to better understand where we are, so because we've made amazing progress in 20 years, mm -hmm. and we have 20 years to go, and we could really make substantial progress. So, without being too wordy, uh, is it possible that Mr. Bailey could absolutely? Give us a He's already planning on it. Giving your concurrence, we'll have him there. Thank you. Are there any uh, other comments from the board members? Yeah, I have. I have a couple. Um, uh, the materials provided by the Riverside Conservancy. Uh, can that be distributed to us uh, before our next meeting? Yes. Okay, good. Also, um, I was wondering how these recommendations are going to be compiled and put together so that we can talk about them each one uh, when, in fact, we get together next time. We don't, you know, at this stage, we've had a number of recommendations, uh, but is there going to be a list or some sort of, of method to where we can discuss all of the good recommendations from all of the listening sessions? Well, the answer is yes. Um, the, uh, all of the uh, people who have spoken at the past five meetings, uh, all of the comments are being combined or put together in a report uh, that Jill's working on now. And I believe it will be ready for our next meeting. 
It will be. We're actually going to be putting them into categories. So things that are like nature. So if there was a trails, there's a lot of different comments on trails. We'll have all of those things that are recommended to you by the public, so on and so forth, all the way down, down for your conversation. I see. So, so it would be an all inclusive uh, lineup. There's no, there wouldn't be any priorities and nor picking and choosing between them. Absolutely okay. not. Good. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I just, I, I did have a specific question for Ms. McGee, if if I could ask yes, a question about the presentation. And while she's coming up, I'd, I'd just like to say to my fellow board members and also to the staff, I have really enjoyed these listening sessions. And I think all of the things that we've heard reflect such a, a wonderful variety of interests that ECHO has been able to address for 20 years. And I um, I feel very privileged to be up here and be a part of this. And I just wanted to share that. Um, Ms. McGee, one question I had in your presentation, and I'm just trying to get uh, a better understanding because um, we've heard comments about shoreline plantings at several of our sessions. The example that you showed in this um, PowerPoint. Can you give me an idea of what kind of lineal feet that yes. was for planting and um, the overall cost slash budget of that? And then um, was there, is there an actual conservation easement over the lands that had all the plantings? Sure. Um, so the linear foot, actually we've included the, the, the measurements in the PowerPoint presentation, but it was approximately 500 linear feet of planting and 300 linear feet of oyster restoration. Um, the, the cost, Riverside Conservancy, we did all of that on a $15,000 um, budget with a lot of in-kind, um, probably close to $30,000 of in-kind work. Um, that we put into that. And um, there was no need for a conservation easement because it is public lands. It's in the city of Edgewater, the Veterans Memorial Park. And what we did, uh, we issued, um, we submitted a letter of indemnification to the city along with our plans. The city commission approved the planting. And so we really did this in partnership with, um, with the city and with some local citizens. Um, do you have another question? No, the, I mean, okay. You did good. Thank you. Oh, I should mention we're, we're, this year we have a $65,000 grant from the St. John's River Water Management District. We're planting a quarter mile. And the idea is to get a, a sense of what's the actual cost. Let's say if a group of homeowners wanted to come together, 10 homeowners, one conservation easement along those 10 properties, how much would it cost? Um, so that we can have a more standardized breakdown, but it really does depend on the on the topography. Thank you. Do you have any more comments? Okay. So the question would be, um, is there a planned meeting for the advisory board in May? Thank you. The 13th. Our next meeting is uh, May 13th. Yes, Jeffrey. Has there been a determination? Are we going to have a workshop with council in June? We'll be discussing that at the next meeting. It, it really depends on how much work you get done. If you feel ready, it our agenda process takes a little bit. Okay. So um, there is definitely a a planned workshop when it is. We're not really sure yet. So we'll wait and see how much time you need to get all your your um, ideas ready to forward on and have discussion with them. Uh, um, piggybacking on that workshop idea, I, I do see some commonality um, in, in specific areas between some of what we've heard and um, Volusia Forever and I, I certainly, it would certainly make a good use of time um, 
I would be open to sharing a workshop setting with the council as well as Volusia Forever. My recommendation actually to the chair earlier this evening was that um, you all consider having a joint workshop first with both ECHO and Forever boards because I do see some synergy. I, um, I've talked to quite a few folks that see some synergy. Kelly and I have talked multiple times. Could easily combine these living shorelines if it was something you're interested in with the Forever and ECHO process. There's been discussions of ECHO being invested into like Forever properties or um, investing in our trails, you know, different types of trails that we have in Volusia County. So I think it'd be great for you all to sit down together. So that would, you know, delay us a little bit, though I still think that we could get to what some folks have expressed interest in is having a cycle that begins in this fiscal year, but we definitely have to be on target and make sure all those things got done quickly. But uh, the forever does not meet again until, um, I believe June, because their their meetings just started last night and will go all the way through May. Well, could, could we request a, um a meeting with them as soon as possible absolutely you probably want to get through their listening sessions and then meet with you so maybe sometime in june we could do that mm -hmm. or um first thing in july because I, I agree i think it's important that we get these cycles moving mm -hmm. and and also you know have all the facts at, at hand so that we can move forward you know in an intelligent mm -hmm. way absolutely we'll put it on our list the plantation oaks grant that we just heard obviously used the previous application yes um, so w w is there a, a, a problem if a municipality like the one that spoke two meetings ago needed to apply this year because they're going to be losing their match money well I, I believe one of the things we'll be discussing is um, the uh, format of the application that's going out like which year if the uh, recommendations that were made last year are adopted. And, um, you know, so the answer is we need to, that's one of the issues we need to deal with very soon before we go out for another grant cycle is what are the requirements? For instance, the some of the re recommendations that are made uh, actually uh, address quite a few of the concerns we've heard over the past listening sessions as far as match money with, um, you know, smaller not-for-profits. Uh, there's quite a few, uh, just the, the amount of the grant, you know, the, the amount of the match for the uh, super grant. So a lot of those uh, issues are, have already been discussed. And I, I would like to see us have kind of a, like, a, like sort of a quick study um, cliff notes if they still exist uh that could maybe bring us up to date so that we so that we don't lose more time before the next grant cycle but we want an application that's really fair <clears throat> and a lot of the recommendations that have been made will make it much easier for the smaller not-for-profits um, to uh, participate we can send out a Cliff Notes version for all of you um, in advance of the meeting so that you have that so we could run through those pretty quickly. I know that several of you have suggested you'd like to walk through those again. Um, and, you know, we're also happy to meet with anybody that um, would like to talk about it with staff so that we could get you up to date on, um, you know, some of the reasons that the uh, former board put them forward. Are there any further questions or comments? Well, with that, meeting closed. Thank you.